Community Strategy for Endocrine Disruptors, which was adopted in 99, and that is still currently our strategy on endocrine disruptors. Um, but of course, yeah, this was 99, so that's already some 15 years ago, and uh, fortunately there are some achievements that I can report on. Um, and the achievements as we see it uh, are, for example, the endocrine-specific provisions that have been introduced in the Water Framework Directive, in the REACH chemical legislation, in the plant protection product, and also the biocidal product regulations. Um, furthermore, at the OECD, a number of test methods were developed and also, um, uh, let's say, accepted uh, for the identification of EDs. Uh, these were 12 of them, and an uh, accompanying guidance document was also created. We also believe that there was a much greater scientific understanding of the EDs achieved in this period of 15 years, and the EU supported that via research and development. And, uh, yeah, dedicated lots of funds to this. And last but not least, there was also a priority list of substances then put together uh, for further testing of, of these priority substances for endocrines. Now, um, it's not only been activities at the Commission that have been ongoing, uh, also the Council, so the Council of the European Union, in 2012 issued conclusion, conclusions specific to endocrine disruptors as well as the European Parliament's own initiative report on EDs that was published in March 2013. And again, this is calling upon the Commission for action. One other thing, and I see that the date has come off the list, but in November 2013, the seventh Environmental Action Programme was adopted. And uh, this uh, uh, EAP uh, program does support deve the development of harmonized hazard-based criteria for the identification of EDs. Also, um, I think after we've heard so many different things about legislation that is um, different in different places, the development of horizontal measures uh, is, is considered quite important to ensure that the exposure to EDs is minimized. Um, furthermore, of course, there were lots of scientific reports published in the meantime. We have also had an opinion of EFSA relevant to endocrine disruptors. Um, several member states are taking legal action at the national level. Uh, for so far, I think it's only been Sweden, Denmark and France. Uh, SICAM, uh, more globally, uh, has identified endocrine disruptors as an emerging issue already now 2012. And uh, Lynn was already telling you about the screening program for EDs that is now in a quite advanced stage, although it has taken some time. And um, as I understand it, the US is also looking into the non-monotonic dose response, low dose issues that is relevant for endocrine disruptors. Now on current activities, like I said, uh, the REACH review regarding ED disruptors, so the REACH legislation mentioned earlier, that is now in quite an advanced stage. Uh, the development of criteria, um, this uh, was work that started already a long time ago, um, and, but uh, now uh, the, it is required uh, to come up with a proposal. Uh, we have decided at the Commission that there is a need for a further impact assessment, so this might take some more time. Um, for the strategy that's there currently, the 99 one, uh, as we said, there's been lots of development and also this strategy was drafted in a way that now is a, normally slightly different. So there is probably a need to review the strategy and see if it's still fit for purpose. And again, on the test methods under OECD, we believe there's still also work that needs to be done and we need to set priorities on that and perhaps this report that was published uh, from the uh, DGA environment contractor uh, could be an interesting uh, uh, first view on that. And again, ongoing is also now a proposal on medical devices that would also include uh, uh, specific uh, entries on endocrine disruptors. The work has been ongoing um, and work that has been coming outside uh, was, for example, the state-of-the-art assessment of endocrine disruptors. This was published in January 2012, but of course, the development of these start started already much earlier. There was also an EU conference on these on EDs um, organized uh, in 2012, specifically addressing the current challenges in science and policy. Then. Uh, 
we also did quite a, a broad consultation with many different stakeholders, with the ad hoc group and the expert group on EDs. Uh, there's a few more slides on that later. Of course, the EFSA opinion was issued in 2013, and a number of scientific reports were published by these organizations um, yeah, that I already mentioned in an earlier slide. And like I said, uh, currently we're in the impact assessment phase for the criteria. Now, the expected outcome of all this work that's ongoing in the EU um, is regarding the REACH review. As I said, now that's being currently discussed at the Caracal, a REACH review paper in the form of a commission communication for the criteria, uh, the implementation measures for the BPR and the PPR. Um, a review and possible revision of the strategy, the strategy that I mentioned early from 99, having a commission staff working paper with a review and a commission communication of a revision. Then this database, web portal, uh, this information that it could be made available to the ECA ED expert group and an update of the information could ensue. We also are thinking about a workshop or a meeting on setting priorities for the development of test methods. And again, that the medical devices legislation would be adopted. And that's, for me, the main things I would like to highlight. Thank you very much.